No one in this world can you trust. Not men, not women, not beasts. This you can trust. Hello and welcome to another episode of Glory of Golden State Gaming. I'm your host, Swamp Swimmer, and with me today, the oh. Waluigi to my Luigi, Henry. I mean, you're you're definitely taller than me, but yes, I, I will happily be Waluigi. <laughs> that warms my heart. <laughs> well, welcome back to the channel again. Uh, this is a round two of uh, of the North American Masters. Hen uh, Vespasian and I couldn't make it, so Henry is filling in and showing us his battles. Um, first round, he got seven. Was it against um, against Chris? So we're heading yeah, into round two. But before we yeah, get in the battle report, to you. Yeah, yeah. Before we get in the battle report, you have been doing a lot of list crafting and a lot of thought about magic less lists. No magic lists. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I talked to um, Craig Johnson a little while ago after the UK Masters about um, the idea that certain armies' magic phases are spent reactively rather than proactively and what i mean by that is when you look at armies like warriors and vampires who have access to occultism or pyromancy your magic phase is only ever netting you a profit you're taking actions that the other person has to respond to where druidism and shamanism specifically are reactive magic phases so you're hoping to get spells off to make things better for you yeah, defensive uh, spells, basically, yeah, yeah. But if you're going into a combat knowing you need a spell to win the combat, my theory is you shouldn't be in that combat in the first place. Because if you don't get that spell off, you're going to lose. True. So I've been testing out for the armies that can't take proactive magic, just investing that 600 points elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh been trying it with Beastmen and Sylvans mostly. Beastmen has been incredibly positive so far. Really? Mainly because of how cheap monsters are. So the 600 points of Shaman get turned into two Cyclops and all of a sudden you have way more zoning threat, way more combat potential. For Sylvans I've been doing the same thing, just turning it into more archers. Uh, pretty much more building shots, a phase. Yeah building pyromancy in your shooting phase. Um, I would imagine if like, you got the, that extra 600 points you'd want to... Because you're also creating creating space in the character cap, putting it into more beefy characters. Yeah, so part of the theory is every army should be playing in three phases of the game. Uh, movement, combat, and then you pick your other phase. Uh, and I, I think that's the reason you see certain armies not do well, is their magic phase doesn't support them playing another phase, and they don't have a shooting phase. Um, so the idea is just move those points elsewhere and try to participate in different phases. Mm -hmm. um, and really, I just want to pe people stop playing Druidism. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your <laughs> you don't like Druidism. You don't like Druidism. I, but isn't it, I believe is... I've played enough tournaments to where I've never dispelled one of their spells in their magic phase. Uh, they're just like, ah, I have another one. I'm like, great. And at the end, they're like, how many dispel dice do you have? And I'm like, all of them. You can have your last Druidism spell, too. It's on the house. I don't care. <laughs> it's just broadcast combats that people shouldn't be in. So you're like, oh, here's my T7 or a Breach and Minotaur. And it's like, well, I'm just not going to charge them until... Yeah. Like, why would I? Yeah, so exactly. I, the dru Druidism is probably the worst culprit of if you control the movement phase, their magic phase is nothing. Yeah, and Co Cosmo and Shamanism are still culprits, lesser so, but they're just highly broadcastable lores. Um, uh, here's the real question. Are you going to take a no magic list to march to war? I am planning, and well, I need to see how the KOE update looks. 
but I'm planning on no magic this year is the, the goal. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, and the, the armies on the table are KOE, Sylvans, and Beasts. Nice, nice. I'm excited. I hope I run into you at uh, March to War. Yeah, it'll be. I mean, you, you could round one, but... Everyone, I, I declined his challenge. Is that what happened? Did it's, I do that? It, it's it's okay. Um, ben Kerr also declined my challenge, so. <laughs> I learned my lesson challenging you. I got I got toasted. It wasn't fun. But anyway, I, let's get I'll, on to I'll the take, battle report. Take Vespasian's if when if and when he sees this. Round round one if he wants to get up. Okay. On, on record, on the books. I like it. Yeah, Vespasian. He's challenging you. Oh, I will. I, I hope. I hope he accepts. I would love to see that game. But anyway, we're let's get on to the battle report. We are in round two of the North American Masters. Uh, you, after seven points in round one, get paired into Evan uh, from Arizona on Infernal Doors. I played Evan a couple times. He's a pretty good player. Yeah, he he and, he and I talked for a bit. I believe he played in on the Desperado. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah. So he's definitely definitely wants it more than me. That's how I feel about the Desperado players. <laughs> if you told me it was three days, I wouldn't go to Masters. So <laughs> they, they want it more than me. That's a lot of um, games. Seven games or what? Uh, six, eight games in eight, three days. Eight games. Uh, if you are interested in Henry's list or any of the lists in the tournament, please click the link right above my head. The first link is of the... Um, the list review we did for all the lists in the tournament, and then the second link will be back to the round one video where Henry goes over his list in a little more detail. But let's just jump right ahead into Evan's list. Let's see, yeah, he's got... So, you go, yeah, yeah, you go through it, go through it. Um, so it's a Prophet General, he's a Master in Pyro with um, a gun. Uh, he's an Engineer, Tarp Commissioner, BSB, uh, Bunch of stuff that pretty much tells me I don't want anything to do with them. <laughs> yeah. Lamasu Scholar, who I gave the. Um, the Lamasu Scholar is such an interesting model because I never know what the right choice is with him. Yeah. So I gave him Channel this time. I should have given him extra spell, but it doesn't really matter. 23 is the Dilgard with Flintlocks, Full Command. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 39 Vassal uh with Flaming Standard, Full Command. 20 bow vassals, five tarooks, um, a rocket battery, a flamethrower, two cadet chariots, five vassal cav, and a tank with a rocket battery. Yeah, I think um, those, so th those cadet chariots line. are pretty solid. They're great, kind of like quasi chaff, chaff clear pieces. Yeah, they're, they have a five up. Um, they have a lot of high strength, high AP attacks. They're good, and they're cheap. Mm hmm. 250 is great. Yeah, the price point's right there. So how do you feel about this list, this matchup going in, seeing the list? How um, did you feel going so into the matchup? The, the way my list is built, I love static armies. Uh, and the one downside to ID is there's no check. Yeah. Uh, I like Va Vassal Cap are incredible. Maybe one of the best units in the game, but they can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the train doesn't have magic attacks, so I don't care. <laughs> and um, Pyromancy vs. Undead is an event, especially because I know every Pyromancy wizard is just going to throw fireballs at ghosts, because that's what you think you have to do. And as a long time undead player, unless the ghosts pose an intimate, like, direct threat to something, <sighs> Don't don't bother. Like <laughs> rinketing fireballs and stuff, just fireballs should be put at lone models and vampires, not at ghosts, unless you have multiple monsters that can't get out of their way. Gotcha. Beat ghosts with bricks. Like that's how you beat spear hosts. Don't throw D6 magic missiles at them. <laughs> uh so here's deployment. Yeah, so this was uh, Big Flanks, Big Middle. Uh, mm -hmm. Can't remember that to find its actual name. 
and then uh, it's encircle, break, encircle. breakthrough. Uh, so I win sides and give him big middle because I know he's going to castle up. Um, and he drops on me. Yeah. Which, there, I mean, there's no way for him to beat me in drops unless it's like 14. Yeah. But it pretty much told me so his Tark unit and one Kadim Chariot are in the top right. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the Lamasu, the Bow Guys, the Flintlocks, the Tank, the Flamethrower, the big unit of Vassals, the Rocket Battery, the Vassal Cab, and the Kadim Chariot. Mm -hmm. So already. He has a super weak flank and a flank with the Tarx. So him dropping on me just tells me I'm going to load up my big flank that's not opposite the Tarx. Yep. Uh, so for me, it's the the Vampire Cab, the Zombies, um, the Necromancers are running behind the Dragon as they do, <laughs> both Farfalax and the Dark Coach with the Dragon behind them. Uh, the Spectral Hunters, the two units of dogs, uh, the ghosts, both gas darts, and yeah. then the skeletons are out of out of Way frame. over here in the corner, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's putting and the your, thinking behind this was... You're splitting up your two big blocks, so he has to he has to deal with both of them to, to work yeah, on Breakthrough. Yeah, to stop Breakthrough. Yeah. And the thought is both the Varklax are going to get to Vanguard up into that rune turn one. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll have cover versus any of his shooting. Yeah, and then they're fast enough that turn two, they'll kill the war machines. Or my, I know, my turn aren't, one. Aren't rockets considered uh, catapults, so they ignore cover? No, ID rockets are just uh, just shooting attacks. Oh, yeah. It tells you how much I know about the game. All right, so that's a. I think that's a great counter deployment. So he does. He gets turn one, and yeah, not a whole lot happens. Um, this is still before Vanguards. I think this is just an, another deployment oh. photo. There's yeah, Vanguards. The, there's, there's my Vanguards. Yeah. The dogs run up. The Varks run up. Um. And then so stick, sticking to the plan, pressuring war machines, pressuring the cav, um, and also. The dogs are pressuring the tank. It doesn't put out enough static to get rid of them quickly, um, hmm. and it takes its gun off the table as well. Fair so enough. So the the idea is turn turn the guns off, and then he has nothing to stop the dragon, and then the dragon gets to come out to play. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Same thing over here. This is his turn off to uh -huh. the right. Yeah, so the Tarks start pushing up pretty uh, way more conservatively than I thought he was going to. Um, I think he was waiting for a trick. There's no trick here. It's just <coughs> it's not good units facing off against his best unit. Um, yeah, these, these two sticks aren't going to do anything to the Torox, right? No, but they'll cost the Torox time, and that's what I yeah. need to cost them. And then the tank turns around to start shooting at Arkalax, and the uh, Lamasu does something to try <laughs> to get out of the way, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, and there's another picture of your um, your skeleton. Yeah, the, yeah. Right. <laughs> the skeletons finally enter the shot. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is bottom of turn one here. Yeah. So. And you go hard. He, yeah, so the uh, the one bark block in the ruins charges the vassal cav who stick. Actually, hold on, before before we get before we get into this, what, what real damage did he do in his turn one with a shooting? Um so his rocket on the train misfired, his uh, flamethrower killed one of the dog units. Okay. And then um, Pyromancy killed two of the uh, Wraith Cav. And that's pretty much it. Wow, and the uh, rocket... Oh, his, and... other, his other rocket bounced off the Varkalak or the coach or something like that. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. So just nothing really happened. Uh, okay. Fair enough. So fair the enough. top left Varkalak charges the Vassal Cav, who hold. Um, the other Varkalak charges the Rocket Battery. Yeah. And then the Dark Coach charges the Vassal Cav, and he decides to flee that because it's a long one for the Dark Coach, but if I hit it with both, the Dark Coach is just stuck in, and then he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, but with so, the flea, of course, it's easy easy catch for the Vark who catches it, and then the uh, other Vark makes the charge into the rocket battery. Yep, and then your dogs go then, into the tank also. Yeah, dogs go into the tank just because the tank only has D3 grinds and three attacks from the crew. So I should, um, just running the numbers, be there with one or two dogs. Uh, which yeah, gives good. the time great great time to just get up into the tank and kill it. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. And the zombies and the vampire knights are just beginning the long walk to his deployment zone. So. Uh, this is just another picture of the same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just some some of my pictures. I believe I retook because it's hard to see things past the dragon. Yeah. Uh, and this uh, is just the yeah. other side. You go up yeah, onto the hill. Just... I'm surprised you didn't. You. Um... I I want him to charge me. I want yeah. the Tarks to start getting involved over here, because once they get past this piece of impassable terrain, they're not going to be able to contribute to the actual game that's happening. Mm. So I'm just <laughs> putting putting the gas up so that he charges. I want him to charge the gas. Uh, so I'm just trying to bait him into it, make it seem like I'm trying to stand off, but in reality, it's just putting the gas up to get charged. Because I are need you all him to afraid pass. of are you all afraid of them going into the skeletons? Like I think he has enough. Um, does he have enough with the with the Torak unit and the chariot to take down the skeletons? Not in a turn. It'll take him at least two. Yeah. Um, because I won't crumble out that fast. And I'm fine with him. This entire flank is there for him to pick up. Because <laughs> it's all this is his only scoring unit that will score breakthrough in this mm -hmm. game. Um, so as right as away, get, we're trading, yeah. trading two for one. And he can't ignore the skeletons. So he has to come over here. He has to play my game. But the second he goes past that piece of impassable, he's never coming back. Mm. Uh, so that's that's the point is trading off all of this so that the Tarux don't contribute to the actual game. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, this looks like it's the same photo. I just love taking the <laughs> photos of turn one. Lots of turn one um, photos. All right, so here's the aftermath. Okay. So the Varkalak blows up the uh, war machine. Which then panics these bros. Oh no, and panics the bows. Uh, oh no. No, so the big spear unit, the bow, little bow unit's fine, but the big spear unit breaks and runs. Um, and the Varkalak kind of overruns, as you can see it here. Mm -hmm. The dogs do exactly what I thought they were going to, where they stick around um, and keep the train locked up. So yep. this is going yawned well because we got these guys to run in also um, and yeah, you can see some of the units are flammable but it doesn't matter so um, so it looks like this is back this is bottom of two now right um yeah this is back to my two so i forgot to take a picture on his turn so what happens here is his warriors charge the dogs just to clear them out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately for him, his Kadim chariot charges the Varkalak that had just killed the war machine. Yeah, this one. And um, he does nothing on impact hits, and the Varkalak kills him before he swings. Jesus. Uh, how, many, how many wounds does those, those chariots have? Four or five? Four. Okay. Um, and I think I did one with the Cultism Magic. Okay. Uh, but the Varkalak just murders it, gets a free reform, and now gets to charge the Flame Cannon. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, and he failed to rally the spear block, so they just see themselves oh. out of the game. So oh, Evan, already, Evan, Evan, Evan. so Evan. already, just two Varglax in this dog unit have just deleted a couple thousand points worth of nonsense. Um, and like, I believe also the dark coach here makes another charge. Oh, it charges the tank and fails again. So it's just kind of spinning in place. <laughs> um, and the dragons come up because now it's not afraid of anything in his army. So the dragon's just coming up to start applying pressure. Yeah. And then the, you get the race into the tank also. Yeah, the race going to the tank, which is more or less a death sentence for the tank. Yeah. And um, the vamp vampire knights have done their job. They've entered his deployment zone. And now they can relax. That's all I needed them to do. Uh, um, like it... So this just this just shows the Varklak overrunning. Yeah. Um, is it did this combat all, all have an also? Did you zero wounds to the tank? Um, I think the tank's taking like three wounds at this point. Okay. And he's got like one rate. Yeah. So, but if he commits the um, dwarves to this combat, the dragon just ends that. Yeah. So he 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 knows that. The tank's on its own. Um, also, I believe this turn I'm going to Binding Scroll Flaming Sword because it's the only thing that gives magic attack. Yeah, he's going to try to shoot you with these guys. Yeah, or yep. just to put on the tank. Yeah. I can't have it grind, grind magically. Oh, yeah, true. That's a good point. Uh, and I believe on the other side, there might be a picture, but the Tarks start killing ghasts. Yeah, they, there we go. They kill the gas darts. They Looks reformed like they kill both. They kill both of the gas darts, which is nice. And then they reform to fight the skeletons. Which um, and you he, don't really care he about. He blows it. away, blows away the ghosts here, which I'm <laughs> fine, fine with. Oh, he turns. He turns with these guys and shoots the ghosts. Interesting. Yeah, shoots and pyros the ghosts down. But there are 140 points. It really doesn't matter what happens to them. Yeah, true. So that's my entire army. It's, it's, I mean, what was it? They're was it incredibly cheap? Should he have just shot at your your dragon and hoped to spike? Um, he's fours or fives into sixes. Yeah, it's not good odds at I'm, all. I'm not sure it's worth the time. And Pyro doesn't do much against him with MR2, T6 with three up. He, yep, he's yep. in a really rough spot here, and I think he was kind of a bit off kilter after just how fast the Varkalax moved through everything. Mm -hmm. So I think he's just kind of scrambling at this point. Yeah, let's the see one here. thing I'll say he did right on the uh, Tarak flank is he never gave the skeletons a double six charge into that chariot. He mm. always measured 17. Every turn would measure 17. Because the one of the biggest tricks for vampires is if you're out of the march bubble and there's no downside to the charge, you always declare the charge. Because 50% of the time, your core is going to move the same speed or faster. Yeah, that's a very good um, point. So skeletons, if you give skeletons boxcars, skeletons should be taking that boxcar charge. Because... <laughs> You might just move six inches and you're happy. So it looks like I think this is bottom of three. You continue to push with the dragon. You don't bring the dragon into, I don't think you can, into uh, the flint locks. Um, yeah, there's no reason to ever risk the dragon. He's just mm -hmm. an implied combat piece. Uh, yeah. But the other Varkalite comes into the tank and he's going to finish that one off. And then go into and then... the rear of them, yeah. And then this Barkalak charged the uh, Bowman, and they're going to flee and rally. So now the chariot's facing the Barkalak, and the Lamas is cowering in the corner. <laughs> and the uh, Dark Coach continues to spin, because... Because he can't do anything. Yep. Um, so, so uh, the his general's unit, the Flintlocks, when the Varkalak kills the tank, um, I believe they fail their terror or their panic, one of the two, and just kind of see themselves off the table. What? Yeah, just nine no reroll. Um, 
it's just fit, fell out of panic, kind of go away. I believe the wraiths might run them down or something. Oof. And it's at this point he realizes that the Taruks have been playing the wrong game this whole time, so they spin around because uh, he's thinking that the dragon might want to fight that, but the dragon has no interest. Uh, and everything just kind of dives, starts diving away from the wraiths because they're next on the sacrifice block. Yep. Uh, and that's and the end of the game. That's, that's it. So the Tarks charge the wraiths, blow them up, and more or less everything I have moves out of range or out of arc of the Tarks. Um, but with so, that amount of his stuff running off the board, uh, you take a big win, 18. Yeah, it it just was super rough for him. He Nothing he tried went right. And I think by the time you realized the Tarks fighting skeletons didn't matter, it was too late for the Tarks to actually save save him. Um, so I was, I was pretty happy with this. A, a gun line I mean, can be kind of scary for the dragon. You can't, uh, yeah. I think he failed some very key uh, panic checks and terror checks. Yeah. Yeah. Where was his BSB? Like, why was it just his, a. His, his BSB is in the Tarux. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah. His BSB is the only magic weapon in his army, and his BSB is in the Tarux. Uh, because the Tarks are bodyguard. But yeah. I think this is one of the games where the BSB can just run around by himself. I can't really touch him except with Brave Calls. Yeah, true. That's a good point. Uh, he should probably should have ran that, that character out and just forget about this. Well, the, the Tarks alone don't need the character to kill skeletons. They what I'm saying is if, if he just would have ignored your skeletons over here the whole game, because he's, he's, they're fast enough to get back into the center of the board. Yeah, he can start applying pressure and yeah. stopping me. But he'd have to uh, he'd have to wipe you and get all the way over to your other two scoring units, which would be really difficult. Yeah, and this this is the problem of, of him dropping on me is I get to pick what actually fights the Tarx, which is nothing, nothing of substance. Um, but yeah, he got super unlucky that first shooting phase, and the game kind of ended on the bottom of one. Yeah, really. Uh, but uh, Evan, my my first game with terrible luck to this game with good luck, and um, it all kind of seem it seemed to be that way all weekend of playing Desperado guys. I'd have great luck, and then my next to play other Masters guys and decide mm, they they got here on merit. Let's let's not. Uh... <laughs> no, but the, he he was super fun. We uh, we went out to dinner and talked and uh, just kind of talked about the game and a few things that uh, he thought it or we thought he should have done differently and it was it was a super interesting game really fun guy um, no but, evans yeah, evans an bad, awesome guy i've played a i've played a handful of games against him and he's it's always been a fun game um well, Evan, uh, man, the, just the dice weren't with you this game. I'm sorry. But, um, hey, if anyone's still watching, please hit that like and subscribe button, as always, guys. And uh, we will see you next next uh, game for you. will be game three. You're sitting on seven plus 18, so 25 points, which isn't horrible yeah. for going into round three. Playing playin my, my boogeyman, Jeff Durham. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, you're spoiling it. You get paired in the Jeff Durham. But we will we'll talk about that in the next battle report. Everyone have a good evening.